Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lilly and today we're going to talk all things Sephora sale recommendations. Now if that sounds interesting to you, do the YouTube things like, subscribe, notification bell and let's get into it. It is that time of year that if you follow a lot of makeup YouTube, your subscription feed is going to be like filled up with Sephora sale recommendations and Sephora sale hauls. Like, let's just be real. And yeah, I like watching these videos too. I love seeing what creators recommend. I love seeing what creators are going to purchase. And I asked you guys on my community tab if you wanted to see a recommendations video from me and it was a resounding yes. So here we are. A couple of things. One, don't feel any pressure to shop this sale, you guys. I, I get it. Trust me. Of course, you are your own human. So you make the best decision for you and your circumstance. But honestly, please don't feel pressured. I totally, I get the FOMO, but please don't feel pressured. I'm going to try and group these by category. There will be timestamps if I've managed to do that. If not, it'll just be one long video and hopefully you're here for the ride. I'm actually going to do this video structure a little bit differently to how I would have normally. I filmed this the other day as well and I did like a massive recommendations and it was so long and I was like, you know what? All of this content already lives on my channel. Like a lot of the products that I was recommending are older products that I love and you guys know I love if you've been around here for a bit. So I thought what I'd do for this video is actually talk about some of the new products that have been launched this year, especially more hyped ones and give you my opinion of like, yeah, I think this is worth it. No, I don't think this is worth it. Or, you know, either or in between, whatever, around these new hyped products and hopefully that might help guide your purchasing de decisions in some way if we share, you know, some makeup preferences if we're like makeup twins. I'm also going to link down below all of the videos that I think might be helpful as a reference guide to shopping the Sephora sale, should you wish to check them out. They will be linked in the description box. Any of the products that I specifically recommend, they will also be linked in the description box for you guys. They are affiliate links, so if you use them, thank you so much, I truly appreciate it. It all goes back into investing into my channel in some way, shape or form. So let's get into these products, shall we? I'm gonna start off with eyeshadow palettes because I was having a look at a few of the new palettes that have dropped so far this year, and honestly, I think I've only picked up like two of them because they haven't interested real, like me really in one way or another. Like for example, the Huda All Matte Nine Pants. It's not that they didn't specifically interest me, it's just those colour stories. I have them 10 times over so I didn't pick them up, for example. So, the eyeshadow palettes that have been released recently that I picked up is the Tom Ford uh, Cherry Smoke Quad and the Forbidden Pink Quad. So, I have videos of both of these quads on my channel as well. This one here is Forbidden Pink. And then we also have the Cherry Smoke. The Cherry Smoke I don't personally think is worth it unless you know that this colour story will be like your holy grail kind of colour story. Just an FYI, and I have a video on this, but pretty much all of these shades here, they all come out the same on the eye. Honestly, there's not really much diversity to these shades once it's swatched out, once it's on your eye. So the formula's okay, like it's not horrible. It's not the best formula in the world. So formula wise, I wasn't necessarily disappointed, but for the shades and the lack of diversity within those shades, I really do not actually think this is worth it. Also with this quad, the formula is powder mattes and then like a satin and a metallic. With the Tom Ford Forbidden Pink quad, again, it will come down to how you feel about this color story. It is more neutral rose leaning, more neutral-ish leaning. These two kind of have a little undertone of rose in them. Then say the name for bit in pink you would think it would be quite pink but this is the cream formula which is actually my favorite formula from Tom Ford I adore this formula and if you think you would vibe with this color story then I actually do recommend this quad keeping in mind Tom Ford quads are a very subtle kind of formula they're not super sparkly they're not like a Pat McGrath Labs or a Natasha Denona if you want something that's like super glittery and out there might not be for you. I actually have a video ranking my Tom Ford quads. This one and Cherry Smoke isn't in it because I got them after it, but I do talk about like kind of my philosophy around Tom Ford and that kind of stuff. So I'll link that down below for you guys if you want to check it out. Moving on to primers, I only have one that is new that I've tried that I think is kind of hyped up that I actually do really recommend. And this is the KVD Locket Pore Refining Primer. I adore this primer. Again, I have a full review of this primer on my channel. I think this is a really, really good primer. It isn't as pore smoothing as the Tarte 
like pore, timeless pore smoothing primer. That one is a holy grail for me. That one really is like a blank slate, but this one does a pretty good job. The other thing that I love about this primer is that it has an ever so slight tack or like stick to it ever so slightly. Nothing like the full on hydro grip from Milk Makeup, but like it has a slight tack. So I find whenever I use this and then put foundation over the top, it just goes and like extends the wear time of my foundation the entire day. I think if you have super, super, super dry skin, maybe just kind of concentrate this to like your pore areas. But if you have combo to oily skin, you can really put this over your whole face and it works really well at creating that longevity for your foundation while kind of smoothing the whole canvas. Now we have foundations. I have tested a few this year and these are the ones that I think have been really quite hyped up and I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on them. So the first one, Again, I have a dedicated review of this on my channel and I love this foundation. Like it is one of my top, top, top foundation recommendations and it is the KVD Good Apple Serum Foundation. I have the shade Light 12 and I love this. It is like, you can build this to be light to full, full coverage. It is seamless on the skin. It is smoothing over texture, smoothing over pores. It's long wearing. It's just everything about this foundation. I just absolutely adore. I really, really love it. Um, I do actually also, as a fun fact, prefer this one over the Good Apple Foundation Balm. That one used to be like one of my top, top. This one has totally dethroned it. I just absolutely adore this. A foundation that I wanted to love so so much but i just can't get behind it i really can't is the say glowy super super skin foundation i have the shade seven i talk about this in my speed reviews as well i just can't get this foundation to work for me i just can't i do have combination textured skin and i find that this foundation really really enhances my texture which is the part that i just can't get past. I really like my my foundations to be quite smoothing on the skin. And so for me, this is just too texturizing. It's also really, really not uh, enough coverage for me. I can't really build it up whenever I build this up to be like a light medium coverage. It honestly just seems to really like cake up quite heavy on the skin. I didn't find it to be super long wearing on my skin either, keeping in mind that I do have combination skin, sorry. So I got the shade seven as well, which actually looks quite dark in, in a swatch and in the bottle, but on the face actually was quite a fine shade, which I found quite interesting. Um, but yeah, I just, I can't get behind this. I think if you have really, really, really dry skin, you'll probably actually really like this. Or you're someone that like really likes a light weight foundation and that extra, extra glow to your foundation. I think you'll really like it. But I think if you have combo up, like just stay clear. A new foundation that I have been testing, it's the foundation that I'm actually wearing in this, like right now. Keep in mind, I've been wearing this for like almost eight hours, so don't judge it too harshly right now. But I've actually really enjoyed this. I've been testing this for about four days. I haven't actually had a chance to put this on my channel yet, but I really like it. It is the new Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. I have the shade 1N2 Vanille. So it's this one right here. I wasn't expecting to like this. I don't know why. I just I think the reviews that I'd managed to catch of this was kind of really mixed. And so I thought it probably wasn't going to be for me. But I really like it. I really, really do. It is a nice formula. It's a really nice mix of hydrating but not glowy and not um, oily feeling or heavy feeling or anything. It is a very light medium to medium coverage. I did try and build it up to a more fuller coverage one of the days and it did get a bit heavy and cakey for my liking on the skin. But I find this to be really quite smoothing on the skin, very lightweight. It really looks like healthy and natural on my skin I find too. It's I mean it's going on hour eight now and I think it's still looking pretty darn good. I have powdered just a little bit through my t-zone but I'm not looking too rough to be honest with you especially because lately my skin really has been going through it. So yeah I actually have been pleasantly surprised by this. A powder foundation that I also really like is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet Foundation. 1N6 is my shade and it's a perfect match 
and I love this. I have a video um, trying this as just the straight powder foundation and I also have tried it in another video as like a, set, like a light setting powder kind of thing and I really, really like it. I think if you like powder foundation specifically, this is one to really look at. It has some coverage to it. It really does, but it is really blurring and long wearing and it really, like how they've called it skin matte velvet, that's exactly how I would describe it. So I definitely think that one's worth the hype. Let's talk about color corrector and concealers. I love both of these things. I have challenging under eyes sometimes or most of the time and anytime a new color corrector or concealer gets released generally I'm going to pick it up to put it to the test. So a color corrector that recently got released that I picked up is what I'm trying to spit out there is the Givenchy Skin, uh, sorry Prisma Libre Skin Caring Corrector. So this one right here and this is in the shade Peach. Now, I have two things to say about this concealer. Firstly, the shade. So this is too deep of a shade for me personally and my skin tone. The peach is just too dark. I need something that's like two shades lighter than this and then it would be perfect. But the formula, the formula is a chef's kiss. So I recommend this if this is the right shade for you. If you're my skin tone or down, I think this is probably going to be too dark for you, but if you're medium upward and this seems like it would be the right color for you, I recommend this formula. It is so lovely. It's like hydrating on the skin without being oily or like breaking up your concealer that you put on top of it. It's smoothing and it really does a great job. So I do recommend this if it's your shade. So I've tried four concealers so far this year. The first one that I'll talk about is also the Givenchy Prisme Libre Skin Caring Concealer. I have the shade N95. As a side note, I'm not doing swatches or anything in this video. Again, I have so many videos using all of these products, I promise. This is a brilliant concealer. I love it. My one complaint about this concealer is that it doesn't have quite enough coverage for me. It really is just a straight down the line medium coverage. You can build it up and it looks amazing, but I would love a little bit more coverage with this and then it would probably be my holy grail. But the finish of this, again, it's like hydrating without being too oily or greasy or and it doesn't like crease or anything like that. It's smoothing. It's long wearing. It is a lightweight formula. It is honestly so lovely. But if it just had that little bit more coverage, it would be like just 10 out of 10 for me. So if you know you like a medium coverage concealer, you're probably going to super duper love this. But if you are looking for a more full coverage, just keep that in mind. But I do recommend it. One I really don't recommend in any way, shape or form. Like I tried so hard to get behind this concealer and I could not make it work for me. Anytime I use it, it just is horrific. The Valentino concealer right here. This is the shade LN2 and my lord, I just could not get this to work for me at all. It's this really weird formula that just doesn't melt into the skin. So it just like awkwardly sits on top of your under eyes. Even when you like tap it in, I've used fingers, a sponge and a brush, nothing worked to actually melt it into the skin. And so it just like awkwardly sat on top, which when I powdered my under eyes also made that, it just like kind of slipped around, made it really like, um, made the powder like patch up and cling to it a little bit. And then within like 30 minutes, the concealer always here had worn away completely, like worn away completely. It was the most bizarre formula I have ever tried. It's also super lightweight, but yeah, I just do not recommend, do not recommend. An expensive one, but it is pretty good, is the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Concealer. I have Zero C, Zero Bare. I really, really like this concealer. I think it's lovely. Again, straight down the line, medium coverage. You can build it up quite a bit, but it is, it's not going to be as full coverage as like a full coverage concealer. <laughs> um, but it is a really nice finish to it. Traceless is a great way to describe it. You really do not feel like you're wearing concealer, period, on your under eyes. It is flawless. It's smoothing. It's long wearing. Um, if you need a super, super hydrating concealer, probably not for you. It is more of a natural finish. Even though it says matte, I find it to be more natural. If you want something super hydrating, go for like the Givenchy. But this is really, really nice, especially if you do like a stick concealer. I was honestly pleasantly surprised by this one. And then the Holy Grail one that takes the cake for me, this has honestly become one of my, if not my favorite concealer, even over the Huda Faux filter, which is a big call for me. It's the concealer I'm wearing today. This is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Quickie Concealer. I have the shade 20 NN. And it's incredible. It is full coverage. It can layer beautifully. It's smoothing. It's long wearing. It doesn't settle in fine lines. It is a little bit drying. 
just ever so slightly. When I say that, it's probably turned heaps of you off, but when I say that, I mean just like ever, ever so slightly. I do have dry under eyes, so keep that in mind. If you have oily skin, it's not going to be an issue for you, but it is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's like everything, you know, some people, they really don't like tart shape tape because it's too drying and too heavy and cakey looking, but they love the coverage maybe. So that's everything that what you want from Tarte Shape Tape essentially if you don't like those things is what you get in this and it's got so much product in it and I just honestly I recommend it I love it I can't stop using it it's amazing I've only tried one new powder from like that's sold at Sephora so far this year and it's the NARS what is this called soft matte advanced perfecting powder I have the shade Cliff so this one right here, this is a nice powder. I just find that this shade is way too light for me. I can kind of use it on my under eyes, it's, but it's just, it's a very brightening powder. And then the next shade up from this, I'm pretty sure is like, I need to see it in person, but from online, it just looks like it's going to be too dark for me. So it's kind of an awkward mix of shades. The actual formula of this is really, really lovely, very smoothing and blurring on the skin. It is really nice. It's not my holy grail powder that I've ever tried out of like the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Pressed Powder or um, the Laura Mercier Secret Under Eye Brightening Powder, the Kosas Cloud Set Powder and all that. I like all of them much more, but it is a really, it's a solid powder and I don't think you'd necessarily be disappointed with it, but it hasn't been as wowing to me as others. I have a couple of cream bronzers that I've picked up this year. One is a formula that's been out for a really long time, just a new shade, so I thought I'd give it an honorable mention. The Rare Beauty Bronzer Stick in Bright Side. I have a short on my um, YouTube channel here where I've done half my face with Happy Soul and half my face with Bright Side if you want to compare them. Brilliant formula, worth the hype, highly recommend, absolutely adore this. I also picked up the Milk Makeup Toasted Sculpt Stick, so this little mini one right here. This is a true contour shade, I will swatch this one for you guys. It is a true contour, like proper undertone grey, at least in this shade, keep that in mind. Obviously other shades might be slightly different. Um, I actually really like this if you want a true, true contour, and like obviously if you're my skin tone, but the other shades I'm assuming follow suit with their appropriate skin tones. If you are looking for a true contour, I do really like this. If you like their other cream bronzer stick, I think you'll really like this. And then this next one is the Tower 28 Sculptino in Broad. Mine's a little bit messy, so I apologize. Um, I do really like this, but it isn't my favorite. It has its moments though. So like, for example, if I was to go on like a beach vacation, this would be the cream bronzer that I would take with me. If you are a light makeup wearer, so either like no makeup makeup or just like a very light layer of your makeup I think you'll really really like this but if you want something that's like a bit more bolder because you wear it a little bit more glam it just might not be for you I would probably go for like rare beauty for example but I do really like the formula it is really quite lovely and I think if you have dry skin as well or normal skin you'll especially like this formula shall we talk about cream blushes uh, this one is my holy grail I freaking love this product it is so good if you ask me it's the Danessa Myricks yummy skin blurring balm cream blush. This is rosé and brunch. I adore it. I think it is so, so good. Um, it's a formula that I think will span across a lot of shades, like skin tone shades, sorry, because you can really like sheer this formula out or you can build it up to be super, super pigmented. It is very soft and natural and blurry on the skin. It's really quite undetectable, very long wearing, goes really well under and over powder. And I think it's impeccable truly impeccable we obviously have to talk about the charlotte tilbury matte blush wands these are all of the rage everywhere and i get it it has that little like tiktok viral moment with like the dots on the face and all that kind of stuff and people really love charlotte tilbury um look these aren't bad by any means i just don't believe that they're exceptional i think that charlotte tilbury controversially just my opinion gets a little bit overhyped for the product itself. I find these to be quite finessey. If you're not careful, they will lift your foundation either under or over powder. So for me, they're a little bit too finessey. They are nice. I have been wearing them more than I probably expected I would, but I definitely would be picking up this one personally over these ones. I just think these ones are okay. Randomly, a powder bronzer. And look, I'm going to caveat this. I haven't tried it yet. It literally arrived like an hour ago, but I'm going to give it a mention for a specific reason. If you are wanting to try the new Pat McGrath Labs Divine Bronzer, and they have your shade because I know all the shades haven't been dropped on the Sephora website in the US and you want to try this I and you don't want to wait 
like you don't want to wait, I potentially would recommend maybe picking it up in the sale for the 20% off only because generally like Pat McGrath Lab, ha Lab sorry, has sales regularly on her website for like 30 plus percent off, which normally I would absolutely like for any other Pat McGrath Labs product, I would be saying do not pick it up in this Sephora sale unless you cannot wait for a Pat sale. Like don't do it because you'll get a better discount on her website directly. The only reason why I'm saying if you are eyeing this off, I'm not speaking to the quality. I'm just saying if you really want to try this and can't wait because I it literally just arrived. Usually her new releases skip the first sale that comes their way. So if she has a sale next week, generally her new releases will skip that sale. So if you don't want to wait like for the next sale potentially, maybe you want to pick it up now in the Sephora sale, but that's up to you. You make the best decision. And honestly, she may change her mind and she may include them in the next sale. I'm not sure, but keep that in mind. Powder blushes. I have the new Too Faced Cloud Brush blurring blush. This is the shade Candy Clouds, um, and this is a beautiful blush. I would only recommend this shade personally if you like this kind of bold, like bright, cool, tony pink color. However, I recommend this formula. This is one of the most blurring blushes I have ever tried. I want to pick up more shades of it. It is beautiful. I actually am so impressed. The packaging is so cute and adorable. And I actually think this one is worth a look in. A blush that I'm genuinely surprised that I'm a bit like. Mm about is the house lab blushes i have pomelo peach and acai sky shades are stunning like look at these shades absolutely gorgeous and listen i recommend all pretty much all the other house labs products i recommend the highlighters the bronzer is my holy grail bronzer i love the foundation i love the setting powder i think they're amazing but for some reason these blushes are not wowing to me i don't know what it is every time i've used them i have just been less than impressed they're not terrible like i can keep them around and i'll use them but they're just not like like this one i want to use this one i want to pick up more shades I'm like that's beautiful and ethereal on the skin I just for some reason don't feel this way about the house labs blushes it's just a little bit too finicky they're almost like too pigmented in some ways for me which is good for deeper skin tones so maybe keep that in mind if you're a deeper skin tone maybe they are worth a look in for you but they're also just not as like smoothing and like airbrushed on the skin I like my blush to be as like airbrushed as possible and it just doesn't seem to do that so yeah they're a bit mm, for me now these highlighters aren't necessarily like crazy new but I thought I'd just give them an honorable mention the Charlotte Tilbury glow glide very beautiful it's described like a liquid highlighter for the skin I agree with that I think this is a very natural powder highlight it does have this like it spins see that so if that's going to annoy you don't pick it up but if you're eyeing it off and you're wondering about the quality top notch. The Rare Beauty highlighter as well I think is really really stunning. I think you know gorgeous um, formula. It's actually the highlight that I'm wearing today. Very blinding. Different to the Glow Glide. This one is a lot more metallic and just like impactful. The Glow Glide is a lot more like seamless and natural on the skin. You can use less of this and it looks a lot less you know full on but this one you kind of this one is there to be seen, whereas the Glow Glide is really like a glow from within. A setting spray that I actually really, really, really have been gobsmacked by, am so impressed with, is the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Matte Setting Spray. Phenomenal. If you have combination to oily skin, phenomenal. Don't get this if you have normal to oily, uh, dry skin, sorry, you don't need it, trust me. It really does mattify, okay? It properly mattifies. And this, you what you need to do is like spray this on and just leave it for like a minute and then come back and it really actually does blur your pores and mattify like even if I don't know if I have a travel size of this but a travel size would be awesome to throw in your handbag and just spray on throughout the day if you have combo oily skin and know you get oily throughout the day and you just want to reset your face without necessarily putting on more powder this does the job I'm actually I honestly have been surprised I didn't expect to like this I was like this isn't going to do anything. And if it is, it's not going to look great. It really does. It kind of creates almost like a filter for when you're like, when you have got that oily skin. Again, if you have dry skin or normal skin, I really don't think you need it. Finishing up with some lip products. Honorable mention, the lip that I have on right now is Unbreakable. So the Urban Decay Vice Bond Liquid Lips. I love these. This is also Textum. I've talked about these constantly. This is the only liquid lip that I like, period. It is so, so good. It is so long wearing. It wears through my coffee consumption, which is a lot. 
Um, it, it honestly is one of the only liquid lips that will last eight plus hours a day for me and doesn't wear away or doesn't like get all patchy from, you know, drinking coffee and eating and all that kind of stuff. And I find it very hydrating, doesn't give me butthole lips. Like it doesn't, it dries down, like it doesn't feel like anything on the lips, but it also has this slight sheen to it. So it almost is like a, um, like a shiny liquid lip, really long wearing. Once it's dried, it's not sticky. I don't know. I love these. Highly recommend. I know they're not brand new and I know they went through their own viral moment, but I do recommend them. I have two shades of this Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Color. I only have one here. One's living in my handbag. Um, I have a short on my YouTube channel as well where I lip swatch these and in my recent Buy This Not That, I compared this with the original serum. Honestly, I prefer the serum. This one has a lot of pigment, sure, but it is so not long wearing. Like it is one of the shortest wearing lip products around. It does feel good on the lips, don't get me wrong. And the shades are stunning. It's just really not long wearing at all. I actually find the serum one to be more long wearing. And honestly, after like three to four minutes, I find these to be like the same shade or the same opaqueness on the lips because this one wears away so quickly. So, I mean, I don't necessarily know... I guess if you go in expecting it to be a really short-lived lip product, then you probably wouldn't be disappointed because it does feel lovely on the lips and the shades are beautiful. But if you were expecting more of like a, even just like a satin lipstick longevity, you're going to be disappointed. Rare Beauty Lip Oils. These are having a moment. Didn't realize this was tinted when I picked it up, but you know, there you go. Um, not that that matters either which way, but I don't, I don't love this. And it's nothing against Selena, okay? I really love Selena, so don't come for me. But I just don't because when I think of a lip oil, I'm, Picking it up thinking it's going to be like a glossy lip balm, but more so something that is hydrating and more balm like on the lips. And this, the oil wears away, like that kind of lip oil side of it wears away so, so quickly. And then it leaves you with the tint. So I guess if you want like a lip tint, great product, like great product. Um, but if you are looking for more of like a lip oil, which is kind of what it says it is, right? Like tinted lip oil. It's not hydrating at all. Like I actually found this dried my lips out, not hydrated my lips, which is what I want out of a lip oil. So yeah, overall, I mean, if the tint that was left behind hydrated my lips still, I'd be like, yeah, go for it. But it doesn't. So I'm just kind of like, mm, it's not for me. Maybe it's for you though. These Tower 28 juice balms, I highly recommend. Again, I have a short as well demoing these and kind of giving a little mini review on my YouTube channel. Um, I think these are amazing. They are a balm. They have this really beautiful amount of tint to them. Not crazy long wearing because they are more of a lip balm, but the packaging super cute, super thin, like throwing it in your handbag or whatever. And I actually really like to pair these with the lip liners from Tower 28. So I have like the brown and the pink one and these pair really well together. And um, the lip liners make these like more long wearing in terms of the pigment on the lips. Um, but both are super comfortable. I think the lip liners are an incredible product. Like they're very long wearing. They don't create any blurring or any, uh, sorry, any, um, bleeding from your lip products or anything on the lips. Like I think these are a really, really good lip liner and these are a really good lip balm. Like I, I really think these are great. That is it. That's all of the, the recommendations uh, that I want to give you guys for now. They're all of the kind of newer products, more hyped up products that I've tried so far this year that I think potentially a lot of people will have their eyes on. Obviously there's newer products getting released every day. So I might, you know, kind of miss some here and there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys some of my thoughts on those in case that was helpful. Again, I will link other videos down below that will go more in depth on certain products as well. If you kind of want to really deep dive on them, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you planning on shopping the sale? Are you skipping it? I think that either which way you choose to go is is up to you, honestly. Like, you do you. You are going to make the best decision for yourself. But if you are shopping it, I kind of am interested in what you're going to pick up, so let me know. Because <laughs> I'm nosy. Anyway, if you're watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. I appreciate you so, so much. Truly, thank you. And I just hope that you have the most amazing day, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye!